But one thing I did learn about the property is there were some not so positive things that were done at the property. Some things that were found, some altars, some maybe cult type things back in the wood line. Welcome back. I'm here again with Katie Page. Katie, welcome back. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to talk a little bit about your time returning to the ranch when you went to film the first season of Beyond Skinwalker Ranch in the Rocky Mountain Ranch episode and how well your experiences correlate with some of the beings and phenomena that the remote viewers or at least David's team of remote viewers found on the ranch. So in terms of just getting started, I think we ended the last episode with the story about like the claw marks on the back of your, and again, I had a more positive interpretation, but I could be completely wrong. Maybe whatever that was, was trying to prevent you from falling over the fence. Oh, good theory. Oh, she's going over. over. (laughs) It's probably not, but I figured I'd try to be positive. (laughs) I mean, you could have the opposite interpretation. Maybe it gave you a push, but who knows, right? I'm going to go with it was helping me. (laughs) It also took my dang bracelet. That's a whole other story. Well, we could talk about that, but no. What was the bracelet made of? Was it made out of gold? Silver. What's interesting about it is, though, and I know this is good. (laughs) It's one of those weird things. So in the APRA report and reading all these documents, back in the day, they used to bait the land. They said when we would put silver and turquoise out, the activity would amp up. So they were like baiting areas to try and like, I don't know, capture footage or I don't know what they were doing. But anyway, for years, I had this custom Celtic silver bracelet that was made in Santa Fe, New Mexico. It never fell off. I wore it for years and years and years. And actually, in the David Morehouse little segment they put on History Channel, I'm wearing the bracelet. You could see me wearing it. I'm like, there's my bracelet. Oh, wow. Later that day, gone. It's on the ranch somewhere, and it freaks me out because I want it back. So anyway, so I'm going to go out there with my metal detector and look for my silver Celtic bracelet. But I just find it weird that of all the places for it to disappear, it would disappear on the ranch. Kind of creeps me out. But I love your, I love your that they were helping me from falling over the barbed wire. <laughs> and I'm so well, I mean, glad they did put like, that in the episode. If it seems like claw marks, that would indicate pulling more than pushing. Yeah, just right? like, ooh, like, he'll help her. Down she goes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you never know. Funny. Okay, anyway. so you get back to the ranch and what memories kind of struck you the first when you return so many emotions are going through i mean from the time that this was even like a thought that i could possibly go back to visit because so pleasure here on your show you know it whole process of brain where and driving by it and it's a gated locked property now so i put a note in the box of the people that live there now saying who i was and of course this whole time for years actually so pre-covid i had reached out to this family but again i didn't know how to approach them i'm like don't want to call them on the phone and go hey by the way did you know that a b c and d all happened where you where you live like i'm pretty sensitive to that and uh, so then COVID happened i'm like okay nobody can go anywhere i'm not going to just call them on the phone and lay all this heavy stuff on them back on the ranch was with the cameras rolling and i had all sorts of emotions going from anxiety to fear to oh my god i can't believe this is happening to what have they experienced because i had no idea if they've experienced stuff since we left i had Mm -hmm. never met them never talked to them i don't know anything by the way did they (laughs) we'll get into that and I, i have to tell you I literally thought my greatest fear was because I'm not a crier in general, but I'm like, what if I get there and I start shaking and crying and I have like PTSD, like response. I, I had no idea. But the the thing that happened was the very first time back on the ranch, we were coming back from the bar. So it was dusk. So it was getting dark. And I was just panicked that I just wanted to get before it was dark. 
because, you know, they had to stop at the gate and uh, that's where we met Paul and Andy from the show. And I'm like, nice to meet you guys. Like and I, the, my, in my mind, I'm just going, I want to get to the house. I want to get to the house before it's getting dark because I wanted to see what I could remember. And that's all yeah, I the production about. crew probably <laughs> w- deliberately did it. So it got dark before you got there. So they had and good I, you know, cinema, right? Yeah, probably. And I'm the only thing I'm thinking about is my memories. I'm just like, get me up there. I want to see what I can remember. But to my surprise, it was a matter of like, okay, that's the same. That's different. But in the same location, I remember the tree. It was like, you know how that is. Like, I remember this. This looks different. So I remember that. That looks different. You know, that just kind of orient, orientating myself to the property itself. And then it was pitch dark. And then the blizzard came. And then it got creepy and and all that. But I kind of got to where I ended up when we did that radio where they set up the radio equipment and they mm-hmm. had the equipment inside the original house. And the thing responded to the 1.6 megahertz. That whole thing was creepy. So we had the ham radio and they're trying to communicate and they're getting no responses, no response. And mm-hmm. the producer actually said, hey, this is like Katie's thing. Let's see if we can get permission for her to talk into the radio, which they did. And it's in the episode where I, hey, you know, remember us, we're back, and boom. So I repeated that three times into the radio. And then as they're scrambling, like, you got to get the people from outside inside so they can witness what's happening right now because it was crazy. So they're bringing the crew in from outside to witness what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I'm at that point just kind of getting into this fighting mode of like, Whoever I'm talking to right now, because I don't know if it's a ghost, I don't know if it's aliens, I don't know what I'm talking to, but that little girl, that 9, 10-year-old, 11-year-old little girl in me felt like, well, I'm grown up now, you know, like I got into this like, don't mess with me now. And that brings me back to what I was going to say about my daughter with that mark. So we were in the hotel room and this, I'm like, oh my God, what is this? And my daughter was going, hey... I really want to go visit the ranch. Can I go with you one day, mom? And very loudly in her head, she heard a loud screaming, no. And my daughter, who is now 23 years old, 22 at the time, she goes, mom, I just heard in my head, no. I don't want whatever is attached to you uh, to be attached to me. And so she heard very clearly, she goes, I won't go there. And I'm like, okay. So, yeah. What do you think said no? So I don't know. I don't know what I'm communicating with. I don't know. And But I could tell you this, after that happened with that, my back, we're going to do some grounding, some protection, you know, and all that, and which we did. We did do that. And she, you know, made me promise her that I would do that. I've had weird things now here at my house up here. And so it's not listening and it's not working because I'm having paranormal things at this house too. So what's happening to you in your house right now? Right. Well, the the strangest thing, I just recently had somebody move in and we were hanging pictures on the wall. They're magnetic pictures, four of them. And three of them came flying off the wall at the same time. The other one kind of tilted sideways. The TV, I have a big TV downstairs. It's turned on by itself twice, different times. I heard a whistle in my living room, these kind of things. I mean, to have one picture fall off the wall, fine. But to have three come down at the same time, and the one flew like into the middle of the room. So that just recently happened. What were the, the pictures th- of? Uh, guitar g- musicians. Hmm. And what's interesting, the one that didn't fall down, I had stated that that one was my favorite. The one that stayed on the wall was my favorite. The other three flew off. And then a couple days later, I was folding laundry in the laundry room area and the TV comes on in the family room. I'm like, why did the TV just come on? And right when that TV came on, the one that didn't fall slid down the wall. (laughs) I'm just like, okay, those kind of things are happening. Now it's been pretty quiet recently. Things have like settled down a little bit, but. What what was your emotional state when they happened the first time with the. Like, were you upset or were angry, neutral? Stress, stress, stressed out, <laughs> stressed out. <laughs> but we're like really stressed. Yeah, pretty before stressed. It, before it happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's I mean, what I wonder be, too. I'm like, am I causing? It might be you. Like, yeah, it might be you. It could it might be. be you. It could be. 
and i wonder that too at the ranch like that'll be interesting to see like because things start up again like did i have that much anxiety and that much stress and that much apprehension to like kind of cause things to whack out i don't know <laughs> i don't know are you familiar with lynn buchanan mm -mm. he worked with david morehouse in project stargate but he had growing up he had lots of instances like that like he took out all the skiffs in europe when he lost his temper once and it was, really this is the augsburg Germany. yeah and then by and I, when i say all the skiffs in europe i don't mean all the u.s skiffs in europe i mean like the soviet what do you mean US, he took them out what do you mean by that the communications like for the classified communications oh. network they went out for like all of nato and warsaw pact in europe he didn't know that at the time but on the soviet side but he found out afterward but one of his colleagues did something to humiliate him and make him like kind of make him look like an idiot in front of all these generals and he just mm. flipped out and it just fried the network but he mm. had these pk experiences growing up but it was tied to his emotional state that's interesting because that goes back to what we talked about at the last episode is this whatever that disassociation piece is that maybe we as people just humans in general have more uh oh are we okay what was that i don't know anyway maybe we can affect things more than we do <laughs> what's happening <laughs> like, like that maybe you're not like feeling that. like distressed or like a little what bit. are you feeling right now because i've always had that around me and that's something my sister and i talk about because you know, i don't talk about like the trauma stuff but my half brother mm -hmm. he burnt down a couple of our houses act down like there's a lot of trauma stuff a lot of bad stuff that was going on when i was younger the divorce alcoholic father i mean like it was a lot of violence and upheaval and trauma and so that's something i've wondered personally like some of these experiences of that I connect to the ranch or maybe it is more trauma induced or maybe I play more of a role and I'm starting to believe that just like with Jacques Vallée that the mm -hmm. experiencer does play a role in the experience and maybe this is part of what we're trying to uncover and discover at Beyond Skinwalker and other scientific studies like how much does human interaction play a role in the phenomena itself and I'm starting to believe it plays a pretty big role because even within the mutual ufo reports we get you can have a group of several people have an experience but it will only affect one a certain way or attach them or continue to affect them and why is that why does that happen kind of thing and i think that's an important piece of the puzzle is yeah that, i think there's there's yeah. there's a story in that book that you showed me or well it's either that book or it's skinwalkers at the pentagon where they had like animals in like tweed jackets like like just sitting there smoking cigars like somebody saw something like that and they're like what like am dogmen. i looking so, at right now and it's so funny you bring that up and i always have to be careful what i say because i try to be as grounded as a person as i can and i love the science and the research and the documents and that's why i'm so crazy about documents and like confirmation because some of these things that people experience and it's taken me a long time like getting into the cryptid worlds and these large birds and you know you talk about the hat man and all the mothman and we just had margie k out for color mufon and i don't know a lot about this stuff because i've never really delved deep into it but mm -hmm. just like what you said you know you have these reports of these dog face people in trench coats and i'm like okay <laughs> like, you know but at the same time people are there's so many reports of them so there has to be something to it just like sasquatch and bigfoot and all the other cryptids and all these other it sort of it makes me laugh in a way because i'm talking about disappearing boxes and mm -hmm. you know what's the difference i don't know it's all very strange it's all strange and the disappearing box thing i didn't talk about for a long time because i thought it was cuckoo but when you have the sheriff 
admitting that he saw it and brought his posse sheriff and they saw the box go into the ground. Then they experience it on Skinwalker. Then I do a podcast with some guy out of the UK and he's experienced similar things. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, all of a sudden you're not alone anymore with your experience, just like with Dogman and everything else. Eventually you have a whole group of people experiencing the same kind of phenomenon. Well, then it takes it to a different level. Like, okay, there has to be something to this, what's going on. Yeah, I think there's something about the fundamental nature of reality that we don't quite understand well enough yeah. yet. And I don't think the government understands it quite right. enough yet, but they know that it's real and they're trying to figure out, you know, that you can't really say, we have an announcement to make, we're not alone in the universe. Okay, right. well, who are they? We don't know. <laughs> well, what can they do? Have there been abductions? Yes. Why Have you been able to stop the abductions? No. No. Why not? Because we don't know where they're coming from or who they are. I think there's a lot of that. Right. Or they could say, reality is not what you think. We are all living in a matrix and you can create any reality you wish to live in. What kind of reality do you want to live in? And in fact, when mm -hmm. Lou Elizondo spoke at the symposium when he first came out and he talked about a year from now, we'll have a fundamentally different conversation. My thought went immediately to the nature of reality, not the existence mm -hmm. of extraterrestrials or craft but the true nature of reality itself, that's the secret. That's what they want to keep from us. If every individual knew the power that we each have and what we can create and manifest in our lives, oh boy, would we be living in a different world. And I don't I, I think, they think they have they two. Want they, <laughs> they actually have two words for that. It's called panpsychic collapse. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, <I'll> just, truth. <laughs> yeah. My understanding is that some people looked into that. I don't know any more details than that, but really, mm -hmm. are they still alive? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't want to get too close to anything I might get in trouble for. I'm always worried but, about that. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Who knows if it was a flight of fancy by somebody interested in that, or who knows if it was real? But I think we just don't fundamentally understand what the nature of reality is, and right there's probably risks to you know figuring out that you like you said if you can shape your own reality i mean even if we don't even go that far if we go mm -hmm. to the point where everybody can do remote viewing right right yeah the government's not out there touting hey let's hire some remote viewers and stuff like that they're they just kind of shut up about it they don't really talk about it but mm -hmm. you know people you talk to and people i interview it works yeah, right. Anybody it's, can train to learn to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I was just having a discussion with David Morehouse and I ran into a little experiment, right? Just a thought experiment. Mm -hmm. And in order to validate what I was doing, I said, give me some information that I can validate with Dave. And it was about Ingo Swan. He'd been in his apartment when he was alive. Mm -hmm. Here's some information. Did you like go into his medicine cabinet and find that he had <laughs> nitroglycerin tablets? It was very specific. Like it right. was that. It was literally that. Mm -hmm. And Dave was like, no, nah, not really. However, I probably spent more time in his bathrooms than anywhere else in his house because anytime something broke, Dave had an independent contractor license, so he knew how to fix all this stuff. So he would fix Ingo Swan's bathrooms. So he's just oh. like, that was a, like, if that was remote That's... viewing, that was a hit. Yeah. So anyway, there's just, there's a lot of crazy stuff. And the way I did it is just first thought in my head, I just wrote it down. Didn't edit that, it, didn't, so. Right, and that's important. Like, I, so I went, there's a, a thing called the Denver Psychic Development Group. And so way back, I started going every Friday night to the Psychic Development Group to kind of work on, you know, intuitiveness and readings and remote viewing and these kind of things. I did that for several years, actually, every Friday night. Small group is a safe environment. Practice mm -hmm. readings, non-judgmental was great. They still do it to this day. But in that, the biggest thing I learned is, boy, you really have to trust your first. And I literally on a, one of the weekend retreats, I was literally pulling like foreign names of people, relatives that not even in English. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's Uncle Paul. Well, yeah, I'm like, well, I don't know where that came from. But you really have to trust it. And yeah, so that that's a big piece of that. But I do believe that we are part of the equation Me, we meaning the experiencer mm -hmm. are definitely part of the equation yeah i think there's something related to consciousness and your ability mm -hmm. to for lack of a better word open the veil 
right? Yeah, You're kind of right. spreading your awareness out a little bit more. Like we all have very finely tuned brains mm -hmm. to just handle the nature of reality so that we survive. And now we're yeah. kind of beyond that point. So we kind of, you have to kind of open that aperture a little bit. But the problem is, is nobody's telling us on it from an official basis what's good, what's bad, what's this right. and what's that. And maybe they don't saying, know. <laughs> and maybe they don't know. Yeah. So you're taking a risk by doing that. But the same point, if the government's not sharing and they're not protecting you, then I guess you just have to take that risk. Otherwise, yeah. you're not going to find out what's there. So, right. you know, and I mean, it, I'm not saying everybody should go to a Ouija board and do that. No. I, I would highly discourage that. But right. I, I think there's people don't trust their intuition as much as they probably should. Right. right. I mean, you've had that experience. Have you ever had that experience where you almost got into an accident? and time just slowed mm -hmm. yes. right like i i i pancaked a humvee where i was standing outside the hatch when i was in the military and i kind of i could feel it was about to happen and i had like all the time in the world like i could do i could have done calculus in my head i was, I was like <laughs> okay i know when this happens i'm not supposed to jump out i'm supposed to just drop in so i'll just drop in and then i grab something and then it was over but it happened so fast that i had my colleagues right. reported i was dead and oh wow i was fine I was fine. No, no problems. Nothing. Did you, but it, did, did you have a near death experience? No, I was completely no. oh. unharmed. It's just wow. time slowed. Yeah. Right. I've, yeah. I've had that experience very much so in a, another traumatic experience, but back to intuition and also the coincidence and, and so many just beyond coincidence, things have happened to me. But the one night I can remember I was a, a sophomore in high school. And I had broken up with a boyfriend, right? And so you go up the stairs of our house. My mom's house was on the left. My bedroom was on the right. We get halfway up the stairs. And here I am, a sophomore in high school. We stopped dead in our tracks on the stairs. And I said, Mom, I'm going to sleep with you tonight. What teenage girl does that? Nobody. And I don't even go in my room to get pajamas on or sweats or T-shirts. or net. I just go right into my mom's room. Not a minute too later, you hear down the stairs. It was my boyfriend and his friend hiding under my bed with baseball bats. What? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh my God. Yep. Called the police, all this whole thing. Had I gone into my room, I would have been beat with baseball bats. So it was one of those things like you talked about, like everything slowed down. We stopped. It was almost like, nope, you're going yeah. here. Like you're protected. And then that happened and that's happened time and time and time again. I have two stories for you good. after this interview that I'll, I'll tell you about. My audience <laughs> okay. doesn't need to hear it. Okay. All right. So going back to your time, I, 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 by the way, I was fascinating. It was, it was okay. It was an okay. It was an okay diversion, but we, we yeah, should get back. Sorry. To sorry. Your ranch. No, no, no. That's my fault. I took you. I took us there. Okay. So most people on the site have seen the video, three videos that David Morehouse did with mm -hmm. remote viewing of the ranch there were a lot of beings in this thing and like a wide variety so let's as i can remember them let's start with that impish thing that you know what i'm talking about like the black the horn the the no, not the, no, not the oh. horns we'll get to the horns but okay. the one that either the, there's that like looks a, that looks like this sort of no, but scribbled because no, well, there was one like this that freaked me out. It was all scribbled and that, black. that's the last one I want to do because that was the yeah. that was the creepiest one. Yeah, now, it was a dark little impish oh, thing, but oh, it was yeah. it was not yeah, the little right, right, right. Yeah, I know what you're talking about now. Right when I saw that, okay. First of all, what I have to say, let me just start by saying this again. Even at the hotel, I wasn't allowed to go introduce myself to David Morehouse. I was chomping at the bit to do it. I was so excited to meet him and talk to him, but they're like, nope, nope, nope. Got to wait till the cameras are away. And I was so impressed by this presentation that he gave mm -hmm. to, to Paul and Andy and myself. And he walked us through how it's done. You know, this isn't just psychics willy nilly. And like these are trained remote viewers and walked us through everything. And I was just captivated and just like, wow, number one, I can't believe they thought to do this. And I, I just was mind blown that they did the biggest remote view here at the ranch okay so i'm, I'm just stunned. that we know of that we know that of. we know of like, that we know who knows of, what right? government's doing but yeah right that we know of and so that just was mind-blowing to me but then as he's walking through 
his results, right? And he's bringing up images. Literally on the drive home from filming that day, I'm just thinking, is this even real? Like so many things they picked up on blew my mind. We're talking the boxes, the hums, mm -hmm. the electronic noises, and that impish thing you're talking about. My first thought when I saw that, it reminded me of the shadow beings in my room. If you blew it up to six and a half, seven feet tall, that's mm -hmm. the dark kind of, they didn't necessarily have that. I think I recall in the drawing, it had this weird looking face on it mm -hmm. or a thing off of it. But I thought of the shadow beings right away when I saw that. He had said something about there was a, like an older woman who lived there mm -hmm. and she's like, oh, that's mm -hmm. my friend or something like. Yeah, there was reports of what she called the animal. And it was only in the original mm -hmm. part of the house in the basement area. And she would see the shadow figure thing and that she called it the animal. And so it could have been that. But in my mind, I went, oh, that's sort of like the shadow figure. Just take that thing off the front of its face and you have the shadow being. Yeah, and no. I found out Nicole, the girl that was raised there, also experienced those shadow beings as well, the tall ones like me, and paralysis just like me. So we kind of instantly connected, her and I, because I'm like, okay, wait, here's somebody else, that, and that feeling of being watched from the woods, all of that. So we had that in common right out of the gate. Where we, so the family, are they still experiencing stuff to this day? Yeah, but just not to the degree. And sadly, we, we lost the mom has passed since the last airing. The, the, oh. Since the show was filmed, she was sick and we've lost her. But yeah, they've experienced things. Now, what's again interesting about that, the dad has had his unique UFO sighting experience. But other than that, didn't have a whole lot of the like paranormal hitchhiker type effects on him. But then again, he's a very nuts and bolts mechanic, you know, busy guy. Maybe he's just not tuned into it or doesn't pay attention mm -hmm. to it. But you talk to the daughter and the mother at the time, they've all had experiences. So it's like kind of interesting in that regard. Now, what about the other being, like the satyr like being, like with the horns? The antelope type person? Yes. Okay. And th that's something I kind of wanted to clear the air on. Now, the two beings that were in the APRA report and that were Dr. Leo Sprinkles files were... The ones I showed you on that other episode, the, these guys here, mm -hmm. and then the Sasquatch being now, and this guy here. But the antelope person, no. But what's interesting to me about that, and this is something I'll share little bits of it. And and I know History Channel doesn't want to touch it because they're very scientific. Right. They don't want to go into, let's say demons or religion or yeah, they don't want to spiritual go too far. stuff. They don't want to go too far. And yeah. I understand that and I respect that greatly. But one thing I did learn about the property is there were some not so positive things that were done at the property. Some things that were found, some altars, some maybe cult type things back in the wood line, that kind of thing. So the frame of mind I was in, I had just had knowledge of these maybe kind of cult rituals that were practiced and then david morehouse shows that image and that's where my brain went because it doesn't look like a positive loving character and my it kind of looks like a demon it you know, looked, i mean it looked kind of neutral to me it was kind of it could i go thought demon way. i thought demon i'm like oh no we well don't. the last <laughs> one we'll talk about yeah. like really unnerved me and i think unnerved nerved you too but but go on, I didn't mean to draw. Yeah, no, no, no. So that thought crossed my mind. But no, I don't recall any reports of that being being seen there on the property. Not to my what knowledge. If, what, when you talk about altars and stuff like that, are you talking about stuff that happened in like the 60s with Satanists and stuff like that? Or are you talking about stuff that happened like way back before white settlers? Were I, in the I just know that the family told me that when they purchased the property in the back of the woods, they found some disturbing things i'll put it that way carvings and trees those kind of things strange altar type of thing i don't know i just know history channel didn't want to touch it and i'm thinking like oh you know oh my goodness what is this and then of course my daughter's like mom protect yourself you know that whole kind of thing so it's a little scary what 
we may or may not be dealing with, I'm just taking extra precautions. I'm not saying that opened up anything crazy on the property because like I said before, this affected the whole area, not just that one ranch property. So whatever this is that's mutilating the cattle and orbs and lights and UFOs and ETs, that's probably not connected into these strange things they found in the back of the woods. However, I'm just telling you and your audience so they know where my train of thought was when David Morehouse brings up that image. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> that doesn't look so great. But no, I don't ever recall reports of that being seen on the property. Okay. Yeah. I think David mentioned that there was, they called them like the antelope people or the something. Antelope like that. Like people, there, there was yeah. some, some, something. The other thing that's worth mentioning is what we were talking about before is, I think a lot of this stuff is connected. So there might be something related to the energy of the place yeah. that brings out all sorts of different things, entities, whatever, whatever you want to call them. Right. So maybe it's something to do with that. Now, what about that last entity that they showed? Like it was like it kind the of dark out like one. Yeah, but it it was really and I'll show it again because I have some of that I stuff. I think it looks similar to the one I just held up. Yeah, it, it did, but they're this, this guy, the one on the the one on the left, but, but this guy, but, but more disturbing. Yeah, it, it, I mean yeah, that is disturbing, that. but it's more disturbing than that. Right, right. Yeah, that that one really got me. Like I almost started to have tears in my eyes when that came up. So many of the things that the remote viewers came up with, literally, they were taking my breath away. I mean, the boxes. I think that some one of the remote viewers like drew a box with like a person standing next to the box on its knees or something or down by it or something, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. And I'm like, well, in the APRA report, it talks about that the ETs warned to the gentleman that lived on the ranch that those boxes were lethal. And if you got too close, it would emit a sound or a buzz or frequency, and it dropped one of the Sasquatches to its knees. Yeah, that's uh, the story like, that's in... The hunt for the skinwalker book. yeah 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 and so when i saw that that the remote viewer did that that's what came to my mind was that very incident that was reported i didn't witness it but it was reported that that happened and i believe it happened i witnessed the box the sheriff witnessed the box i believe the box was seen by multiple multiple people and it's interesting in my mind i've always and i know this is very controversial and maybe there's different types of bigfoot or sasquatch but i think at least at the ranch, it seemed like they were connected to the UFOs and the craft as if they were like workers or bodyguards mm -hmm. or something. They, they were like connected to the craft. So if they were like slaves, that would make sense to me or workers or bodyguards that they would say, hey, look, these boxes are lethal. I'll show you. This is why Sasquatch is listening to what we tell it to do because we can drop it to its knees. And that's what was reported to have happened. And I'm like, whoa. Just to add some weird context to this, so the Kecksburg incident, I don't know if it was true or not, but there was also kind of this instance of these Bigfoot-like entities associated with Oh, UFOs. I didn't know that. <laughs> but also, in an interview I did with Lynn Buchanan again, he, he does remote viewing for organizations that produce spacecraft, things like that, but they have, I don't know what, or, I mean, it's obviously he signed an NDA, but he's been tasked to look out at the nearest star systems. And one of the star systems that he was looking at had like a planet that had these kind of ape-like entities mm -hmm. that you're talking about that had much more psychic ability, but were lower IQ than humans. Mm -hmm. And then there was a spacefaring species that would use them as workers and things like that. Really? I have not heard that before. So again, it's remote viewings and there's no way to independently verify it. Right. But I just wanted to share that because it may help connect the dots if there are any dots to connect. Yeah. No, I, you know, I've considered that. I've also considered what if they're an ET species themselves, but in this instance where they're dropping one to its knees as if it's a, a worker or a bodyguard or something, that it, it, it makes sense to me that that would be the case. There's a really good book too out, it's called Psychic Sasquatch. And it seems to mm -hmm. me, and I, I'm not a Bigfoot hunter, I'm really, you know, I haven't delved too deep into the Bigfoot world although I know there's a lot of 
really serious researchers, just like in the UFO UAP world, that there's no denying this is a phenomenon in of itself. And maybe there are different factions of Bigfoot or Sasquatch that come from different places. I don't know. I don't know. But to me, whatever's at the ranch would have to be interdimensional type of being, just like those tracks show in the snow. And the reason I tend to do a lot of my best like thinking about things when I'm on airplanes and I'm looking out the window. So I was like flying to Phoenix or something. I'm looking out the window and you know, you're flying over the Rocky Mountains and you can see into the woods pretty good. I'm thinking, well, we have the technology now that we can see like infrared and heat mm-hmm. signatures and we can hunt people down. Surely, if we have a family of Bigfoot living there, we would spot them pretty easily. In, in, my, in my mind, I'm thinking, right? They have to be able to phase in and phase out or go underground or hide themselves fairly well in order to remain as elusive as they are. And I think in the case of the, the Rocky Mountain Ranch, we're dealing with something that's directed to the craft or goes underground or interdimensional or something. There's no other way it makes any sense. Or they can leap, right? Yeah. But you probably so. would have, I mean, it would have just disappeared and like tracks. Right. End and the- what what's really cool. So the very first night of filming, we go to this local bar I, uh, where I'm being interviewed by Paul and just, you know, tell us about your childhood stuff. Right. And so a little behind the scenes kind of cool thing that happened there too. So the owners of the bar, this is a, a bar that's been around. It's not always been a bar, but most of the time it's been a, a local bar and it's said to be haunted. And so mm-hmm. we go to sit down to do our interview and we sit at this little table. And so I sit here and Paul sits here and then we end up switching spots and we do our interview. Da, 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 da. And after the interview, I go back to the bar and the woman goes, she goes, I can't believe you're sitting for your interview right where you're sitting. And I said, well, why is that? And she said, because last night after we closed the bar, we had this white ball of light sitting right there in that booth. And what freaked me out about that, just two days before up here at my house, I'm in my bedroom and I see a white ball of light out of my peripheral and I'm watching this ball of light and I'm going, okay, I see this ball of light. I see this ball of light. I know as soon as I turn my head, it's going to be gone. And I turn and sure enough. And she said, she saw that right where I had my interview. And I'm like, that's weird. So that's a little behind the scenes, something that happened. So yeah, that is, that is, and that I mean, weird. there's so many but, different theories you can come up with. Like maybe it yeah. was you in the like future. Remote like remote viewing myself in that situation. Oh, I or just you in the future <laughs> where they just, you know, I don't know. There's a lot well, of weird. Ball of energy lights. But in that bar was kind of, cause people are curious, like, what are you doing here? What, you know, what are the cameras are here for? And so this is a local small town where all the ranchers just come and have their after work drink or whatever, you know? And so I would say 90% of the locals there had either photos to share or stories to share or so-and-so's cattle was mutilated. I'm like, why aren't they reporting it? Here's my card. Here's my, they don't want to report it. They don't want the publicity. They don't want, no, you know, but everybody had a, a unique experience. So to answer your question, if this stuff's still going on to this day, yes, it is. Just not to the degree, I think, where it was just so like every day something was being mutilated and every day all this was highly active. But yeah, it's still people are still having all sorts of encounters out there. And and that's why I love that I got the opportunity to, to be a part of that show is because now people that have experiences know somebody they can share them with and go, okay, you're not going to believe this, but I'm like, well, actually I'm going to believe it because I've heard it from so many people. Now I just got done like a month ago interviewing a a 29 year old to me. It's a kid, 29 year old kid named Jesse, who also grew up around that same area that has experienced Mm -hmm. weird things his whole life. And, and I feel good in knowing that now he has somebody that he could share these things because that's a lot to digest and try to go through yourself when you know, I know I did that. I would, remained in silence for decades. So it's always yeah, back good to be then, able to share it. Yeah. Back then, people would like call you a kook if you even right. said a tenth of that stuff because it's yeah. just so, right. so odd and so strange. The, yeah. But yeah, I think that's part of. Yeah. Thank they God say you're a liar it- or you're liars or you're on drugs or you're getting paid a lot of money or whatever. And it's like none of those things are true. <laughs> 
Yeah, you didn't I get wish paid. We, you didn't get paid a lot of money. <laughs> no, I wish. <laughs> right. I wish. This is voluntary work, voluntary work for MUFON and everybody. A lot of people don't realize that. I will often, like every three months, I'll get a, so how do you become a field investigator and how much do you make? <laughs> I always laugh. Whoa. How much money do you want to spend? <laughs> is the question. Right, right, right. Yeah. We could talk about that very briefly. Like, how often do you get reports that you have to, when you do investigations for MUFON, do you see stuff that's similar to this? Does it have the same kind of clustering where all this stuff happens? We still get a lot of reports in the Colorado Springs area. And of course, that was one of my first things. Ooh, how many reports in this area where all the high strangeness happened? You know how many we have? Zero. Well, maybe not zero, but one or two. Very, very, very rarely will we get reports. And I'll tell you why. Number one, they're small towns, small communities. Number mm -hmm. two, um, if you talk to these ranchers and these people experiencing them, it's happened so often for so long. They've just kind of like, this is what happens in these, you know, we're used to this phenomenon. Ranchers don't want to report the mutilations because they don't get reimbursed. They don't want the stigma. They don't want the publicity. They don't want to be labeled crazy, whatever. And it's been going on for decades, so they don't report them either. But we did get a really cool report of a cryptid from a credible source, a father and a son going to DIA on the highway. Very close encounter of like a mothman type of thing flying right over the highway. And again, I'm like, if it went over the highway, why didn't more people report? I think it's a matter of not knowing where to report it. And so mm -hmm. many times people will see something unusual, go, wow, that was weird. And they go off and forget about it and do, you know, whatever. But yeah, we don't get a lot of reports in the areas of these high strangeness things, but I just think it's population and mentality. You think that the folks at Beyond Skinwalker would be willing to do a deeper dive on your story, especially since they didn't really go into much of the remote viewing. It was kind of, actually, they didn't do it at all during the episode. They had to do like a separate internet I know. Uh, segment on it. Yeah. I There was so many things like that, too, that I was like, oh, man, that didn't make the episode. Yeah. Even the thing, the mark, and I hope that if they're able to do a, another episode or a dig deeper, I don't know for sure yet. I'm hopeful that they'll, they'll be able to do that. And I, I think that they want to go back and do more research. I think it's important. So I'm hopeful that they will. But I hope they can bring some of that footage back in, you know, the remote view and dive deeper and making those connections because the things the remote viewers came up with i mean the helicopters the, the only mm -hmm. thing that they didn't touch on which surprised me were the mutilations i don't recall any of the remote viewers bringing up any cattle mm -hmm. mutilations but they got the helicopters the military presence the boxes the electric noise the hums the strange areas i mean they went underground above ground and th they hit these concentrations of these hits were just like Oh my gosh, this is where A happened. This is where B happened. This is where C happened. And they all were so accurate to the point where I was like, how is that even possible? But they were, and they had the five kids. I was stunned yeah. by that too. They had the five kids and the little girl. Oh, and the car. So in the reports, and they don't talk about this on Beyond Skinwalker, too, we had uh, a car that vanished. We had car that had all these malfunctions and there's all these things in the app report about vehicles and they brought up the vehicle in the remote view as well so i thought that was interesting they also had the jeep right there's like a yeah, jeep, in jeep, the garage. A jeep yeah there were abandoned cars all around there right yeah and the guy that lives there now is that's yeah he's into jeeps so and i know they were remote viewing a specific date back in time but that doesn't mean that i, I you know things that are present there on the ranch wouldn't seep into the mines or the vision of the remote viewers as well. That was kind of what I took from that. Like, oh yeah. You know. Were they able to get footage of that mark on your shoulder? I yeah. mean, it didn't air, but they were, okay. Yeah, they, they did. Right. So we'll see if they weave that back in if we're able to do something else. That would be fantastic. And for me, it's just about still researching the area. It needs to be. I was just happy that it's finally getting the attention I think it really deserves. This predates Skinwalker. The phenomenon just mirrors it almost identically. And I think when you're looking at two locations like that, or three or four or five or six or how many, you can draw commonalities and find more answers when you collaborate together and go, okay, now we have a control group. What's going on here? And I'm so excited that they did that.
Have you ever had an opportunity to go to Skinwalker Ranch at all? I haven't. I, I hope that'll change someday. I think I might be a little fearful too. Yeah. I would be curious to see just what the energy feels like just to be there. And I, I would want to be there at night to compare and contrast. Another thing that happened, and yeah. I've never shared this before either. So after that first night of the blizzard, Okay. And I had fallen forward. So my pants were just soaking wet and I was freezing cold. So we were done filming and I'm just like, oh, 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 oh. and they're like, okay, we have a truck running over here and the heat's on. Why don't you just go sit in the truck and warm up a little bit? So I went and sat in the truck and it's facing the wood line behind the ranch house. So I'm already uncomfortable because I'm like facing the woods. It's dark. All this weird stuff just happened. I'm a little freaked out. And they disappeared. They were like putting equipment away, way back up by the house. And I'm sitting in the truck for like a good 10, 15 minutes by myself, just trying to warm up. And I'm just like going, but while I was sitting in the truck, I see a little red light in the woods. And I'm like, okay. And I'm looking like, come back, come back. And, and for a second, I'm like, are they using me as bait? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my God, they're using me as bait. I'm going to be attacked by something. I, I got pretty uncomfortable. I was really relieved to see some of the crew people start walking back up. I was like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> was, Wait, were that, they walking nice. back up from the woods or are they walking from no, the from the, house, from the from the garage? So you still house, saw a random red light a, a, a random in a red place light where in the forest light. no oh, yeah, one should have been. Right. And then another behind the scenes things that, so we're all standing around filming to do the first two, the smaller rockets, not the big rocket, but the two smaller rockets kind of, we were poking the hornet's nest and one of the rockets guys who had like physical effects on Skinwalker also had physical effects at the ranch in Colorado, felt like it got punched in the stomach and we're like, going, wow, well, this guy's like legit, like, oh my gosh, why am I feel like I'm being attacked by something right now? And right around that same time, it sounded like really large bird wings flapping in the forest line. And we're like, what was that? Everybody heard it. It was like large wings. And we didn't see anything, but we all heard it. So that happened too. Yeah. Wow. Just weird stuff like that. Just weird, random little stuff like losing the bracelet and the guy getting feeling like it got punched in the gut. And the other thing that uh, when we were doing the radio and I'm like, hey, we're back. We were getting transmissions on the radio that I thought for sure would make the show, but didn't like reports about Vietnam War from like but, the 70s. Wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. Something about Vietnam War. And we're like, oh, what? What just came through? And this is a private radio band. This is so it felt like a time warp or time slip or i hope if, if they are able to do something else i hope they somehow what what put band that was back it? in because what band was it what, I, what frequency do you know was it the 1.6 i don't know but it was a private channel because i remember saying because i know through my ghost hunting when you scramble the channels check 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 yeah. check the stations i'm like well maybe it was that but why is somebody talking about the vietnam war and the the guy said no we're on a private channel we're not yeah but you, you not, so <laughs> Run with me on this. I, I so, so when you're dealing with like anti gravity and you're bending space time, you have something called a gravitational redshift, right? So, what happens is if you're listening to like, there might be some time dimension to that, mm -hmm. right? So, maybe it's some frequency that was going on in 1972 or whatever, and we're still in right. the Vietnam War. Yeah. And then also, when you have a gravitational redshift, it'll change the frequency so that the carrier frequency on that may, you know, could be, I can't remember if it's downshifted or upshifted. So huh. there is a chance that that frequency just happened to match or was just redshifted into the frequency that you That's were listening. Although I think it would wild. be like a lower, a lower That's frequency. Wild. Yeah, so I maybe don't it know. was a blue shift. I don't know. I don't know where it came in. I just know that there was a table here and a table here, and it was coming from the radios over here. And we're like, what? And I also want to say it said something like they know we're here or we're here or something like that. And I was like, oh, my gosh, they got that. And in the moment, I'm thinking, well, that's for sure going to make the episode because what was that? But it didn't. And I maybe they can work it back in somehow if they're able to do another more investigations on the ranch. I don't know. But I mean, yeah. the amount of things that happened there to what they were able to put in that 44 minutes, because you got to think too, the first 10 minutes of the show and the last 10 minutes of the show, they're like introducing and then recapping with the Skinwalker folks. So really you have what, 20 minutes of really good 
footage to share, but there was so much that happened that I just left there really mind blown. Like, wow, not only did A, B, and C happen, but all of it together just blew my mind. And my big takeaway from it was that this is still affecting people and this is still going on to a degree and more work needs to be done to go out there. It, it made my job 10 times harder because now I'm like, well, dang, now I got to you know, try and set up interviews and go interview people and start collecting people's testimonies and accounts and really try to get to the bottom of what's still occurring out there to this day. Yeah. So anyway, with that big mush, I was talking about gravitational redshift yeah, and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. It's the reason I'm sure a physicist will listen to it and he'll be like, he doesn't know what he, I get where he's going, but he's probably completely wrong. The reason I brought that up is I was writing a book where that's a key plot point where oh. people are unable to communicate because they're in like a gravitational distortion huh. and they can't, but that's kind of what happens to frequencies. They downshift or upshift, right? So if I can't remember which it is, but if you're experiencing it, it you know, the frequency might be, a multiple of what it is. So if you were outside of that shift, it would appear at a higher frequency or a lower frequency, depending on what the gravitational potential was. And I'm sure there's That's some time component, but if you have a UFO in the air that bends space time, it could result in weird effects like that. It, oh, that's whatever. interesting. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> a very, yeah. very right. like, and you know, I'm sure. Way. That's why they have their scientific team, and I'm hopeful, and I am assured they're looking at all of that data. And I do know that the work that they're doing, both on Skinwalker Ranch and beyond Skinwalker, goes beyond what you see on the TV. Like, I know they're looking at all this data and all this footage, and, and, and at the end of the day, they are legit researchers trying to find answers. I really do believe that just based on my own observations and being a part of that very small sliver of it. You know, I, I just can't say enough good things about the crew and the production team and these people that are out there. And I read comments very rarely. Like if I do a podcast or a show, I will not read comments. Mm -hmm. That might be changing because I just had Phil Class on and Dr. Irina Scott on a show that I do. And um, is Phil Class Phil still around? Yeah, Phil Class, he just did a oh, great wow. book on the Pascagoula case and Calvin Parker, we just lost him. And, and so I was talking to him and there's new witnesses and new documents are finding and all this new evidence for Phil Class's and Dr. Irina Scott's new book on the Pascagoula case. It's called Beyond Reasonable Doubt, right? Because he says, mm -hmm. if I took that case into a courtroom, I could prove beyond a reasonable doubt that this event happened. And what was cool though, a lot of the leads that he found for the, his new book and came from comments from people watching podcasts and shows. They've actually found other witnesses and that's what's happening for me in Beyond Skinwalker. And now that that show has aired, I'm getting people that are messaging me or emailing me or contacting me via my website and saying, hey, I live here and this is what's happened to my family or I've lived here and this has happened to me. And I'm just so thankful for that because to me, that's what it really is. At the end of the day, that's what it's about, you know? Yeah. I and mean, that's what the internet is. It's just yeah. the, this democratization of information. So you can't hide this stuff right. anymore. And like, right. even on this show, there's some connections that there's some information you had that I was able to correlate. You know, I don't know if there's a strong link or not, but right. with something else with somebody, you know, some other person that I talked to. So yeah, right. It's, definitely all related in some way yeah, it's all but important <laughs> is there anything else you want to share about the experience with the audience before we i just really wanted to share that for me and i think this is overlooked a lot like people forget what a personal experience this is for me and you know i didn't know how i was going to react being back on the property and so all these things and even in doing, I'm trying to put all my research into a book so everybody can kind of see how I went through everything and everything I've covered and everything I've found and learned and help me to piece together the questions that I have. Because at the end of the day, I still have questions like, yes, we know NORAD, we know military is involved in some form, but why and when did they come in and for what reasons and what was being covered up and what's still happening to this day. And it's still just this 
big mystery. But for me, the important thing that's coming about from all of these experiences is the fact, and and I do feel Dr. Leo Sprinkle looking down going, good job, because all these different people need to come together and start talking and sharing their experiences to find answers. So, at the end of the day, the whole thing was a great experience for me. It could be a little frightening at times, but I feel like I'm a grown up now and I can look at this from a different perspective, a more rational mm-hmm. perspective. And I'm just going to go where the evidence leads me. And yeah, I could talk about shadow beings and balls of light. And even in skinwalkers at the Pentagon, they like don't just assume that what your experience is necessarily extraterrestrial in nature. I think right. we have technologies that go. 30, 40 years beyond what the average person knows. So who knows what that was in my room? Maybe it was something that we have and they're monitoring. I don't know. You know, I'm open to anything. I'm just looking for answers like everybody else. And maybe it's yeah. something we have 1,000 years from now. Yeah. And like you right? said, and we're coming back and that, bo- I mean, who knows? I mean, it's just, it's a mystery and mysteries are fun to try and unravel. Yeah. I think the more you delve into this <laughs> topic, the more. The stranger it becomes, the high strangest factor right. just goes way up. Yeah. And if you ignore it, you're not going to get anywhere. So that's right. Right. And right, I do, well, I, I do. Oh, one last thing I was going to say, and you yeah. have to look at the whole picture. You can't just put yourself in everything's happy, good box. Like it, it runs the gamut of things, and you have to look at all of it. And so I try to do that too. <laughs> yeah. I think that that's yeah. definitely wise because you'd never want to be surprised on the upside or the yeah. downside. Right. So. <laughs> I appreciate your time right. and I look forward to like continuing to talk from time to time. I yeah, I would love it. to. Yeah. Hopefully we get that second season. I hope they are able to do that because I, I think there's just so much more work that needs to be done and I'd yeah, love to I come back and so share too. that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I agree. All right. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> right. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, please click on like subscribe and the notification button so that you're alerted anytime I post something new. Oh, <laughs>